I am in awe of what comes out of Raelia's head. There's a feeling that she's not creating, she's revealing something, eternally present, rather than constructed. It's as though she's been given access to some wild place where all of this sits, and she brings it back to us. An incredible privilege to visit such a place, to be sure, but make no mistake, the price of admission is more than most are willing to pay. Another much-needed reminder that no one who is good at anything is so by accident. It was a very solidary experience, which makes it, which makes living by myself now a walk in the park. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't feel that big of a deal. When it comes to life, I I feel like looking back, like each person that lived out in this body was quite different, and you just keep growing. But I feel like everybody feels that way. Like everybody's like a completely do, different person every year, every time they meet someone new, every time they do something new, they become like a whole new person. You just slowly inch it away, further and further away from what you thought you were. And it feels like that's kind of been like that for me. Like I went from being like in a very, very religious sect mm. to being super liberal, <laughs> super, I don't want to use the word hippie, but a little bit um, unintentional. My partner says unintentional hippie. Oh, what'd you have? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm you weren't even listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eating them raw makes cyanide in your stomach. So how much do you have to cook it? Well, it's like two hours. So I made this. Looks like something from a fairy tale. <laughs> but yeah, so this one was fun. Like it, it's only um, it's made from just um, tin foil, tin oh. foil and Daiso clay, and then just paint it on top. It's still quite sturdy. I made it quite a while ago. But yeah, so hoping to make something like this, but like a bigger version. It's actually a lot nicer than I thought, I remember. myself or when like people ask me like oh what's got you to start photography it was actually the probably the biggest kicker was me going to Germany when I was 17 um, I was supposed to be an au pair <laughs> I was supposed to be an au pair and then um, I was there I went to Germany the first day she was just like you know run like the mother she was like running me through like what I was supposed to do and then the second day, she says, like, oh, six months will go by fast, or you'll go by fast, or however long I was supposed to be there. And then the, sec and the third day, she says, I'm sorry, our personalities don't match. I want you to leave. And so I get kicked out of the house in Germany, a country I don't speak the language, at 17. And I was all alone. All alone. That was, that was something. So a lot of those thoughts. It prompts or makes you think of a lot of things that she never really wanted to address or think about really and you're kind of faced with you come face to face with yourself in some ways um, especially during this time you see any tape oh okay. right there thank you thank you definitely the weight of memory 
is something that I feel now where the weight of memory. Just maybe that's being a little bit, uh, you know, dramatic. But you definitely you can't you cannot as much as you're like oh I don't feel a day over twenty. You do feel how different a person you are having accumulated oh, yeah. that. To be honest, like I think completely different you know just even with you know the simple biology of like you know your cells all being replaced you know every every so often right you have to be different I think um, um, so it's like seems like when we're when we look back at ourselves um, and we seem very different would you have gotten along with yourself when you were a teenager would you have or like in your 20s would you have gotten along with yourself and then a guy in a bike, older dude in a bike, just drive, um, cycles past me. He's like, whoa. I'm like, oh, okay. But I just keep walking. And then after I get my stuff, I come back and I find out that he's been waiting for me in front of my hotel that whole time. And then he's just like, I need to talk to you. And then he's just like talking. I'm just like, I, and I'm 17, right? So I don't really know how to act. And you want people to like you and you want people to kind of you're just, you don't know how to react, you don't know what's appropriate and inappropriate, right? Because part of you wants to be an adult too. And it was just odd, like he was like talking to me and he's like, oh, can I have your email, kind of this. He's an older dude, I'm gonna say he was 30 to my 17 at the time. And I gave him my email, <laughs> I didn't give him a fake one either. God, the amount of messages that I, that I got, which is like the first, the first message subject that I got from him was your eyes. And then he just sent me this whole like lovey-dovey kind of message. So anyway, short, long story sh long, <laughs> Germany was rough and, but then I came back. And the only reason why I say that Germany was an instigator was because it had me come back. Loving an image isn't always enough to want to create something. So um, during this Instagram day and age, I feel like we see something beautiful, we love it, and then we feel bad about ourselves. It's like, oh, I want, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. Or like, I, I can't do that. Um, so you can enjoy the photo, you can love the photo even, but it creates like a little bit of a pain inside you. Do you ever get anxious about having built it and then it's nothing at all like you wanted it to be? Depends if it's if it's better than what I wanted it to be. <laughs> if it's better than what I wanted it to be, then I'm happy. But if not, then yeah. It's always sad because like you're expecting it a certain way. I'm not very good with um, 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 handling things um, that didn't go exactly my way or well. When it comes to like my art and stuff, it's it's okay like to make a mistake because that's part of like the learning process. But sometimes it can feel a little painful when it doesn't turn out. Like when you put in all your effort and it still doesn't turn out exactly how you want it to. Um, but then part of me is always just like, okay, if I put maybe my effort wasn't good enough, and I just need to get better at effort <laughs> or planning or scoping. You've used that expression before, scoping. What does that mean? Looking? Looking, examining? To me. Is that not a, is that not a common word? You know what? It is. I've just like, aside from when I was a kid, I've never heard people use it because we would say, I'm going to scope that out. Yeah. There's this aspect to it that I like to call the, I can do that. <laughs> There's a couple of times in my life where that's happened, where like I look at a picture and it just looks like destiny. <laughs> it sounds really intense when I say that, but just like, it's, it's a pathway and you see it and it's not even, it could be the most difficult thing in the world or something that you have no idea how to make, no idea what you do, but there's something inside you that says, I can do that. Like it was just given to me and I was just merely the catalyst um, to 
to give birth to this idea. But then some part of me, um, some part of me is just like, I worked really hard on that. I can see how this wasn't an accident. <laughs> um, but once in a while, the, the idea is always the hard part. It's not only the idea, but the, the motivation or the drive to make the idea come into fruition. That's always the, that's the hard part. And, I, and to make a good idea, you need that. That's a very important ingredient. To feel this passion or to feel this energy or to feel this life. To, to, you can't really fake that too well. First, it, it, it feels a little bit vulnerable because when you're making all this art, when you're sharing about your abuse or all these pains, you know, like the nights and nights and nights that you've cried, it feels a little bit intense to show that to a bunch of people that just say, oh, wow, that's pretty, you know, that kind of thing. So it's just like, which is not a bad thing because like nobody's asking to, you know, to share in trauma. But I'd like to think that everybody, to a certain extent, um, can relate because, you know, that's like the whole thing about, you know, being a person. Like, there's a lot of pain involved that comes with the, that comes with the deal. <laughs> it's a very vital ingredient in this recipe of life. And so I'd like to think that despite the pictures being based in pain, it shows a different dichotomy in the sense that it shows that okay this was a very painful experience but it doesn't have to feel painful you don't have to look at it and be in pain anymore somehow there's very little fear and there's very little angst you know about what other people will think um so because it's not about what other people think it's about like you see you see the finish line, you see, like you don't know what the middle is going to be bringing, like you don't know what the journey is going to bring, but you see the finish line already, and so you can already draw a line to that, if that makes sense. Right before the end of that relationship, I had stumbled upon this thing called fine art photography. And I didn't know what it was, because like for the longest time I was trying to, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do because Prior to that, I was doing, um, I was a graphite pencil realist, so I was making some form of art at that time, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. And I stumbled upon this, and I realized that you can use photography as your medium to show what you're feeling, to explain what you're feeling, more like, because I was never good at that. I was never really good at sharing because, like, I was kind of raised to kind of bottle things up and I couldn't really share about how I was really feeling. I just looked at it, took one look, I could, and I just like something whispered like, you can do that or I can do that. And I did it. And I was a fine art, graphite, realism artist. It's a mouthful, isn't it? I, <laughs> I was doing that for like a couple of years. I want to say three, four years. And and it was amazing. But eventually there's there was issues with, with that part of my life. Um, so I didn't continue drawing. Um, but the same thing happened with photography. Um, I knew that I liked photography. I knew that it was like a like a way of an expression, but I didn't know what I, I didn't know what it could grant me because um, um, when you see it online, it's a lot of you know, for example, nature photography is really popular in Japan um, or basically anything else. very, very little artistic things going on. just like it's just to show the thing rather than to show the feeling or to reflect onto the photographer. Um, that can be style as well, but it doesn't really have... Nobody, very few people want to show very, very difficult things in their life. When I first started, um, like for example, this the one image that made me realize what it meant, what everything meant, you know, when it comes to explaining how you feel, was... Um, um, I took this photo and it was the, the whole title was called To Cut Your Ties and then when I was editing it I initially started adding like all these dark blues and grays and stuff because like I thought this was a sad topic so it had to be a sad picture and then the more and more I was looking at it I'm just like but this isn't how I feel this is not like I'm sad but this isn't how I feel so at least not at the core right so and then I, 
the, com the image completely changed. Like it was bright. It was, I was using yellows and reds and oranges, you know, in that image. And it was like, it, this, this, this matches it a lot more. This is, this is how it's supposed to be. And I realized that despite having these negative experiences, despite going through all this pain, you don't have to internalize it. It doesn't have to become part of you. And if it does, it can become something good. So that's kind of how it kind of attached itself to me. Like this thing, this thing of photography. I never really expected I'd be that type of person. Um, it just clicked. <laughs> no pun intended. There's, there was this one really interesting video done about how like some people, they, they have the same idea at the same time. Except the difference is that one person went for it, you know, and then made it. So even though they're very, very unique ideas, to be able to come up with it at the exact same time is very interesting. Um, which it's almost like the spirit landed on a person and the person refused the call. So it went off to look where it can be embodied in a different person, you know.